HET 194 Nate Preparation Week 11 and 12 Transformers and Motors. The objective of this week's assignment would help the HVAC learner to understand the importance of gaining knowledge in the different types of electrical motors, explain how an electrical motor operates, discuss the components of a split phase motor, discuss the components of a permanent split capacitor motor, discuss the components of a shaded pole motor, understand why certain types of motors are used for specific purposes, explain how magnetism affects a motor, and understand how a capacitor affects the efficiency of a motor, and understand the difference in capacitors. In our introduction for this week, motors are used in every area of the HVC field to move air, pump fluid, and to do mechanical work. Therefore, having a knowledge of the operation and the purposes of motors are necessary to the process of servicing, installing, and replacing motors. Technicians will do on a normal routine basis these procedures, and the better they become in diagnosing service issues with motors, the better they will reduce time on each job. Having the knowledge of working on, troubleshooting, selecting, and servicing motors is important to become a competent HVC refrigeration technician. This week, vocabulary will cover end bells, rotor, stator, shaft, capacitor, current relay, potential relay, split phase motor, permanent split capacitor motor, shaded pole motor, inductive motor, three phase, delta, Y, start capacitor, run capacitor, potential relay, starting relay, service factor, power factor, and motor ratings. All motors have some components in common with each other, however, by adding additional components to the motor, it can operate more efficiently. The components all motors will have in common are the windings, the shaft, bearings, the end bells. We will discuss each component in the next few slides. In this cutaway of this motor, you can see some of the components that is exposed from this motor being cut open to show you uh, the internal components of it. The rotor is the part of the motor that rotates. It's uh, made out of iron stackings that uh, will receive the magnetic field or induce magnetic field from the stator. So the rotor is the part of the motor that will receive induced magnetic power from the stator and cause motion or turning force. The rotor is constructed of iron stackings that reacts to the magnetic field. The stator is stationary. It's where the windings of the motor is connected to. And these windings like it will generate a strong magnetic field and will induce a that filled into the rotor to cause it to turn. So the motor windings of the motor have the, uh, the stronger it is and split phase motors there are two sets of windings and these set of windings are the start windings and the run winding. The shaft is what um, the if I say the blower wheel or the pump impeller or the pulleys or shifts will be connected to to do work, the turning action. Also gears and other things can be connected to it also. Some motors have shafts from both sides such as window air conditioners is a double shaft motor. So one end of the shaft is turning the evaporator fan motor and the other side of the shaft is turning the condenser fan motor. The bearings. The bearings is what support the rotor and the bearings can be either sleeve bearings or ball bearings. The heavier duty the motor is the stronger the bearings will be. So usually heavy duty motors will have um, ball bearings while light duty motors will have sleeve bearings. 
The run windings is the main windings of a motor. It's what does the work while the motor is operating. And it has a strong magnetic fill to keep the rotor in motion. The start windings is the secondary windings and it is used only for a very short time when the motor is running. The start windings receive voltage only during the beginning of the initial start of a motor. Then the start windings will come out of the circuit. If it did not come out, um, the motor will overheat and trip out on thermal overload or on, or on safety. Start windings is like I say has more turns uh, relationship compared to the run windings so it has an extremely high uh, magnetic fill to get the motor and the rotor moving. The end bells is what support the bearings. The end bells also close the ends of the uh, motor up and it supports like I said the bearings but it's also supporting the shaft also and so the end bells are very important because its position can keep the motor from operating correctly or rubbing against the uh, the rotor against the stator if it's not uh, adjusted and aligned correctly so basically inductive type motors are motors that generate a magnetic field and it will be induced into the, um, the uh, into the rotor to cause the rotor to turn and basically when this magnetic field is induced into it cause the rotor to actually become a, a magnetized and then we know in magnetism like poles will uh, repel each other while the uh, opposite poles will attract each other. So when this happens, the rotor is trying to catch up with the poles in the uh, stator. Unfortunately, it would never catch up, and a good thing that it doesn't, because if it did, the motor will stop turning. So there's always losses and things in uh, the motor turning the rotor, and it will always um, lag behind and try to catch up to the uh, the correct pole. So inductive motor operation is basically using magnetism. And showing you a picture of a transformer, but it still works the same way. The stackings in the transformer will uh, concentrate the magnetic field inside of it the coil itself, the number of turns, will give strength to the, uh, the coil, which will create a strong magnetic field. So the more turns it has, the stronger the magnetic field. This is a diagram of a motor. You can see the north pole and the south pole of the stator. The rotor is in the center of it with a coil on it. Of course, this is a DC type motor but the operation is very similar to it and it will try to um, catch up or try to chase the poles. As long as the poles are alternating in current it will continue to follow its poles as it changes. So the, the rotor is always moving in, in through inductance. Inductance is the way that motors will operate. So inductance is the process of inducing a magnetic field into another item to generate work. Electric motor works through inductance because it generates a magnetic field from the stator and induces it into the rotor, which is a iron core. The rotor absorbs the uh, energy from the stator and becomes magnetized. This magnetism of the rotor will allow it to follow the opposite pole of the stator. This is cause motion of the motor. So many type of motors we deal with today is our two pole motors or we can call it split phase motors and basic split phase because it has two sets of windings a run winding and a start winding so 
Split phase motors are considered two pole motors because it has a run and start windings. These poles are the most common motors used in fractional horsepower motor, which meaning that the poles um, are and the motor is less than one horsepower. The start windings are used to give the motor extra starting torque during the startup and the running windings are used to keep the motor operating when it's powered up from the power source. So the start windings do not stay in the circuit after starting and reaches normal speeds. So the speed of the motor is really based on their frequency. In the United States the frequency is 60 Hertz. So it's standard. You go to other countries the frequency of the AC power may be different. But the speed of a motor is determined by the number of windings it has. A two pole motor will have a speed of 3600 RPMs while a four pole motor will have the speed or RPMs of 1800. To calculate the speed of a motor you will need to use the formula below. The speed equals frequency divided by the seconds times 120 divided by the number of poles. Multiple speed motors can change its speeds by tapping off the run windings by using only portion of the windings to generate work. The more of the windings being used, the stronger the motor is will to do the work. When a small portion of uh, the run windings is being used or tapped off of, the motor becomes weak and will turn slower than when more of the windings has been used. These multiple speed motors can have up to five speeds for operating blower motors for different purposes. Most residential furnaces used in homes will be a split phase motor, but it will also be a multiple speed motor and will have speeds to control the different volume of air based on air conditioning and heating. So the strength of the motor can be called its torque. So torque is the starting power of a motor. However, the strength of a motor can be determined by the number of turns in its windings. The more turns, the stronger the motor becomes. To give you information about split phase motors and how it operates, and like I say, split phase motors are inductive motors. And split phase because it has two separate sets of windings. And the most common and the simplest type of split phase motor will be a motor that uses a centrifugal switch to take out the start windings after the motor reach up to uh, about 80% of its uh, uh, RPMs, the revolutions per minute. So split phase motors have uh, two sets of windings and they have specific purposes for operating the motor. These windings are out of phase of each other which will aid in starting the motor when electrically it is applied to the, the windings. Being out of phase will allow the rotor to have less distance to travel in this rotation of the rotor to the stator uh, in the magnetic field when it changes. For the rotor to reach the next pole in the stator, the rotor will try to catch the opposite pole of the stator but will not ever find a balance in its polarity. For that reason, the rotor will lag behind the, uh, uh, the change in rotation of the magnetic field of the stator. The purpose of the run windings is to give the motor the torque to overcome the load applied to the equipment being used. The run windings have two sections, the north pole and the south pole. This pole will alternate based on the frequency of the power source. Since the power source in the United States is 60 Hertz, thereby the frequency is 60 cycles per second. What gives the motor strength from the windings is the number of turns 
of the windings. Therefore, larger and stronger motors will have larger number of turns in the run windings. The purpose of the start windings is to give the motor the torque to overcome to start the motor and this uh, torque is only kept during a very short time. So the start windings is very strong and will give the motor enough power and torque to keep it operating when it's uh, in this type of uh, situation. This pole um, will alternate based on the frequency of the power source. Since the power source in the United States is 60 Hz, thereby the frequency is 60 cycles per second also. Another type of motor will we call a permanent split capacitor motor. A permanent split capacitor motor are more efficient than a normal split phase motor. It uses a run capacitor to give the motor more running torque during the running operation. The capacitor has low capacitance that will allow the start windings to stay in the, the circuit and energize during the running operations. Without this run capacitor with low capacitance in the uh, circuit, the motor becomes inefficient and may not operate. A capacitor ranging from about 3 to 25 microfarads is connected in series with the start winding and remains in the circuit during the run cycle. So the start windings and the run windings are identical in this motor and reverse motion can be achieved by reversing the winding of the two windings or with the capacitors. Just change the capacitor into the other set of windings, the motor will turn backwards. So this is a really interesting type of uh, motor. It's more efficient as it runs because it uses a capacitor by using the second winding which is the start windings to power up the motor to give it more torque while it runs. Permanent split capacitor motors are more efficient than basic split phase motors because it uses the start windings continually during the normal running conditions. It uses the start windings and will uh, give the motor more torque to overcome varying loads for some types of systems. You may find uh, this permanent split capacitor motor or PSC motor on many blower and fan type of systems. Therefore, when the load of the motor is increased, the capacitor can discharge store energy to help the motor to operate more efficiently. Another variation of a permanent split phase motor is um, this motor that operates and it can um, operate in a way as a regular split phase motor but of course it doesn't have a centrifugal switch and it uses a lot of different type of applications like in air handlers and uh, ceiling fans and uh, other type of fan uh, moving devices that where the uh, the load can vary somewhat so using a switch uh, controlling the start windings switches such as current relays, potential relays, and centrifugal switches are used to take out the start windings after starting a split phase motor the type of switches will be determined by the, the motor and the current that it will draw. So when we see these type of motors, um, the start windows cannot, cannot stay in the circuit and, and if it did, it would damage the motor. So another type of switch we haven't talked about is solid state type of switches or relays. And this solid state control will do the same job of these electric mechanical type devices, but since there's no moving parts, is more reliable and has less things to wear out because um, it's all done by electronics. So a centrifugal switch is the simplest type, it's mechanical action and basically it use uh, counterweights which uses centrifugal force to cause the counterweights to to move and to cause linkages inside of the motor 
to engage and to actually open up the windings when the motor reach full speed. As soon as the motor uh, slows down or stop, the switch will close again. Current relays are used on smaller fractional horsepower type of motors and compressors. And you find very common on refrigeration systems like dehumidifiers or your home refrigerator or freezer. And this relay is called a current relay because it needs high current to actually cause the switch to open and to close. The way it works, the switch is normally open and it takes high current during the initial operation of the compressor to actually to close the contact to um, send power then it will uh, open again once the motor or compressor reaches full speed so there's a lot of motion going on with this type of relay it's opened and it closes then it opens again and by this motion that's why it's only used in very small type of motors because the inrush of current can arc out the contacts inside of the relay so it's only like again it's only used in fractional horsepower type of motors and compressors a potential relay are used for larger um, motors and compressors and it's designed to handle higher current Potential relays are sometimes called voltage relays because it uses the inductive voltage from the start windings to actually to generate a higher voltage than the applied voltage and this inductance will send voltage to the relay coil and this relay coil only senses the higher inductive voltage. So this type of relay, the potential relay, is a normally closed set of contacts and it will open once the inductance increase in the start winding and it will remain open until the compressor is de-energized. Shader pole is probably one of the simplest motors you can find because there's no capacitors, there's no start windings, there's only one set of windings. Shader pole is the most inefficient type of uh, motor also. So it's only found in extremely small type of motor driven devices such as small fan motors you may find in your refrigerator, um, time clocks, and other small appliances, like very small appliances. Um, it's very, like I say, inefficient, but because it's so small and draws so small of current because of its size, it's not really a factor. But to gain higher efficiency, other type of motors need to be used. So the operation of a shaded pole motor, uh, basically we'll use uh, shaded poles with these copper bars on the stator. And this shaded pole will help focus the magnetic field in the rotor and will uh, aid in um, operation of the rotor uh, through inductance. So it's very simple and like I say it only have one set of windings it doesn't have no starting components but it's very simple and but it's inefficient. So the efficiency is low and it should not be used in larger systems. Matter of fact, they do not make it for larger systems unless um, they're looking to waste a lot of energy. So the use, again, found in smaller appliances, evaporative fan motors, condenser fan motors, found in vacuum cleaner motors. They're used in other type of like time clocks um, and other type of motor driven devices that um, doesn't uh, need much 
uh, energy to do much work. High efficiency split phase motors. Higher efficiency split phase motors require other components to help it to achieve better efficiencies when doing work. So these components include using relays and multiple capacitors to gain efficiencies. To gain higher starting torque for motors, a, it's a must that a capacitor or other type of components will be used to give this type of motor a boost when it's operating. And especially when the motor is starting up under a load, it is necessary to have um, these type of capacitors to give it an extra boost during that time. So highest efficiency split phase motors will use a run capacitor and also a start capacitor. This is like combining a permanent split capacitor motor and a capacitor start motor together. When two capacitors are used, a potential relay or a solid state relay will be used to control the operation of these capacitors. This is a wiring diagram of a refrigeration unit, but mostly it shows the, the motor, or more specifically, the compressor, which is using uh, two capacitors, a start capacitor and a run capacitor, and using a potential relay to um, disengage the start capacitor after starting up. But there are two types of uh, using for start capacitor. Um, a capacitor start inductive run motor only have one capacitor and it will be a start capacitor, but a capacitor start capacitor run motor will have two, a start capacitor and a run capacitor. Capacitor start motors will use some type of switch to disengage the start capacitor. In a diagram to the right you will see that there is a capacitor which is label C and the switch is label S and it is wired into the start winding which is V1 and V2. So the operation of a um, this type of motor, the capacitor start motors, it will have higher starting torque than the normal split phase motor because of its uh, stored capacitance of electrons inside of the capacitor. The capacitor will basically discharge its load during the startup of the motor and give this extra starting torque to overcome any type of uh, stress or strain the motor may be under. Um, during the uh, initial running of the motor. Such um, motors will be used a lot of times with like refrigeration compressors which may start under a load and to overcome that uh, higher pressure because the pressure is not equalized the starting capacitor will aid in getting the motor started. The operation of a start capacitor motor is critical to understand how it works. Since the capacitor start motor are a split phase motor, the increase of efficiency is because of the capacitor. The increase of the efficiency is only during the startup and not during the running of the, the motor or compressor. Without using a capacitor for heavy starting loads, the motor may not even start at this time. If the motor do not start during the initial energizing of the motor, the motor will pull lock rotor amps, which can be 8 to 10 times higher than the normal running load amps. Therefore, using a capacitor is needed to help make the motor more efficient during startup. Also, understanding the uses of it. A lot of small appliances will have um, capacitor start motors, such as your home refrigerator or dehumidifiers, uh, chest freezers. Um, some even window air conditioners like heat pumps will have a uh, start capacitor. And a lot of boiler pumps, because there's water flowing and water moving through the system, sometimes they will use capacitor to overcome the, uh, the in initial inertia of the motor starting up of the pump. 
Capacitor start, capacitor run motor is the highest efficiency split phase motor that you can find. It basically uses both a start capacitor and a run capacitor. And it becomes very efficient because during the startup, uh, using a separate capacitor to give it uh, starting torque. But at the when it comes out of the circuit, that start capacitor is removed by a relay or a centrifugal switch. The run capacitor stay engaged as long as the motor is operating. And that run capacitor is basically giving it extra starting torque when the varying loads will happen while the, uh, the motor or compressor is running. Operation of a capacitor start, capacitor run motor is based on the how the motor is used and what is at the purpose of the motor. So a, a CSCR motor begins operating on a phase displacement between the starting and the running windings which allow rotation to begin. The running capacitor lends a small amount of assistance to the starting of the motor but it is the main function is to increase the running efficiency of the motor however the start capacitor is what gives the, uh, the capacitor start capacitor run motor the majority of its starting power to overcome the initial starting torque. Capacitor start capacitor run motors are the highest efficiency split phase motor so the uh, capacitor start capacitor run motor will use two capacitors which are a start capacitor and run capacitor basically this motor is a PSC permanent split capacitor motor and a capacitor start motor combining together to form a efficient starting motor and a efficient running motor. Both the run and start capacitor will help the motor start under a load while the start capacitor is the primary source of energy for starting. In a diagram to the right you see uh, the same diagram before of a freezer and where you see the, the component but the compressor itself is a capacitor start capacitor run motor. Any HVC equipment that can start under a load and have varying loads while operating will require a capacitor start capacitor run type of motor. Hermetic and semi-hermetic compressors used for refrigeration or heat pump systems have this characteristics and should have a capacitor start capacitor run motor. Another type of motor that become very popular these days, a lot of times you hear people call it the uh, ECM motor. It stands for electronically commutated motor. Electronically commutated motors are the new aspect of HVC fill because of its um, trying to reach high efficiency. And these high efficiencies these days, because of Energy Star and other regulations by the Department of Energy regulating equipment to have certain capacity of energy consumption, that uh, manufacturers are trying to design systems as efficient as possible. And one of these things is using uh, ECM type motor. The benefits of it is that this motor can modulate its speed, meaning that it can go to a very slow speed or increase to its maximum speed and basically controlling the amount of energy based on the load so when there is not a very large load instead of running at full speed at all times it will slow itself down by at the same time saving energy because the motor can modulate based on the, the need of the load it will deliver the proper amount of air water or other methods of heating and cooling the ECM motor will receive AC voltage and then convert it into a DC voltage because it's easier to control the speed of a DC motor by changing its voltage. This is a picture of a small ECM motor. You can see the windings in the center of it is magnets and this magnets is what the rotor is constructed of 
and the once it inducing uh, the motor uh, the turning it will induce a voltage and it can vary the speed by going back and forth there is a trend in HVAC fill and the refrigeration industry to use brushless uh, motors instead of the various types of AC motors like the shaded pole or the um, split phase type motors but these motors are extremely efficient and they can do the job so the ECM motors are brushless uh, AC motors that is converted to DC the most efficient motor you can find in the industry today is a three-phase motor only drawback is that three-phase motors are only found in commercial and industrial type applications because homes do not have or the power company do not bring three-phase power to homes uh, they only have single phase so you will not ever find a three phase motor used in this type of uh, situation so what makes it efficient is because the windings are 120 degrees out of phase with each other and this 120 degrees will assist the motor starting up without uh, any starting components so three phase motors windings have two types of configurations and basically is the Y winding and the delta winding and they are put together to allow the motor to accomplish different tasks for the type of job it would do so three phase motors are considerably stronger than single phase motors because of the three phases that are fed to the motor three phase current actually supply three hot legs to the device rather than the two hot legs you find on single phase systems therefore instead of having a two-phase displacement a three-phase displacement is available without using starting components here's a diagram of the two different types of motors that are three-phase the top one on the right side is the Y if you see that it's the center connected and below that will be the Delta winding which is connected by its ends forming a triangle to the right of that you see different configurations how uh, these motors can be interchanged by themselves so a technician can change a Y motor into a Delta or a Delta into a Y by connecting the wires uh, differently so the types of uh, three phase three phase motors are very efficient because of the way the windings are connected and because of the number of power source or hot legs it have the winding power source is 120 degrees out of phase of each other which allow the rotor to have less distance to travel to the next pole additionally the power source is three phase which on a sine wave the applied voltage never reaches zero volts at any time the difference is if compared to a single phase motor or power supply the voltage every cycle will start at zero at the end of the cycle it will basically be at zero again and because of that it has some losses but three phase power because of three separate sine waves which is 120 degrees out of phase with each other will always be efficient because the peak voltage or the let's say the true RMF type volt will always be higher it will be a more efficient in the diagram to your right you see a three-phase motor and you can see how the rotor is turning and you can see how it's reaching and applying voltage from the rotor to the um, the, th the different poles it has so the use of three-phase motors like I said, it's used in commercial applications only, in industrial, yeah, but you would find it in, in air handlers for the blower motors, the large circulating pumps, you find it in makeup air fans, exhaust fans, and other type of um, motor driven devices that require large amount of energy. So to summarize this chapter, on basic electricity the state of matter is in three different states 
solids, liquid, and gases. Atoms are the smallest particles and are made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Alternating current is produced from induction of magnetism into a coil of wire. Direct current is produced from a chemical reaction into metal plates inside the battery. Electrical energy can be transferred into different forms of energy, such as electrical energy into mechanical energy. Ohm's law is used to determine voltage, resistance, and current in electrical circuits. Voltage is the force to push electrons through a circuit. Amperage is the flow or movement of electrons in a circuit. And resistance is the impedance of electrons in a circuit.